Hi, I'm Life Coach Spencer. Welcome to my channel. This is a channel about life, life at work and life at home. I hope my video will give you some new ideas, something to think about. But remember, it's not knowledge or ideas that will change your life. Turning them into action will. All right, like, let's get started. Today, we are going to talk about servant leadership. This may be something new to some of you. Before we talk about servant leadership, let's talk about leadership. Now, what is leadership? For some, he is a leader because he got a job, the title. He was hired as a team leader or a manager. Therefore, he assumes that he is a leader. However, in reality, leadership is not about position, but influence. Some people can influence others with or without a title. They are the real leaders. So, if we want to develop our leadership, we need to think of expanding our influence. So, uh, how do we expand our influence? In leadership development, we usually focus on skills. We train our team leaders in communication skills, organizational skills, productivity skills, conflict resolution, etc., etc. Now imagine a leader who got all these skills and worked very hard to build a team. His problem is, whenever things do not go his way, he would burst out into anger. He would lash out at his team. No matter how good his organizational skill is, it is not likely that he will be able to keep a stable and high-performing team. So, it's not just skills that we need in leadership, but attitude towards the people that we lead is also as important. And this is where lead servant leadership comes in. Now, what is servant leadership? It is actually a very ancient concept. We can trace back to as early as 6th century BC with the ancient Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu. This is what he said. The greatest leader is one of whose existence the people are barely aware. Next comes one whom they love and praise. Next comes one whom they fear. Next comes one whom they despise and defy. When the greatest leader accomplished the task, all people say, we did it. Now in Islam, it was recorded in the Hadith, which is the words and deeds of the Islamic prophets. It said, the leader of the people is their servant. But of course, when people talk about servant leadership, the most often quoted person is Jesus Christ. He didn't just teach servant leadership. Well, it's relatively easy to say something beautiful or impressive or even revolutionary. But more importantly, he lived out servant leadership in his life. This is what he said. Whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be servant of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. But the modern day uh, movement of servant leadership can be traced back to 1970 when Robert Greenleaf published his essay, The Servant as Leader. This is what he said. The servant leader is servant first. It begins with the natural feeling that one wants to serve, to serve first. Then conscious choice brings one to aspire to lead, to make sure that other people's highest priority needs are being served. The best test and difficult to administer is, do those served grow as persons? Do they, while being served, become healthier, wiser, freer, more autonomous, more likely themselves to become servants? And what is the effect on the least privileged in society? Would they benefit or at least not be further deprived? So you see, a servant leader lead in quite a different way than a traditional leader. Uh, imagine two types of leaders. So leader A, lead by authority and position. You do what I said or else. He communicates through mostly the chain of command. 
there is little personal touch or informal interaction. He focuses on performance and results of his team. Personal issues, family issues of his teammates are not his concern. He asks for obedience and flexibility. Whatever he sets, just go. Now, leader B leads by influence. He wants to, you want to do things his way because you know that's a good way. Now, he communicates through discussion. Everyone can contribute and everyone is heard. He focuses on growth of his team member. Everyone become a better teammate, a better employee, a better person under his leadership. He asks for opinions and creativity from his team. He wants people to have their different opinions and be creative in problem solving. Now, which leader do you want to serve? Leader A or leader B? Well, I suppose you, most of you will want leader B. And that's the power of servant leadership. Well, there are other advantages of servant leadership too. You get to name a field, greater speed in innovation and change, a higher level of employee engagement, higher identification with the company, lower turnover rate, and better customer service. Well, I know you must have lots of questions about the practical side of things. In the next video, we'll talk about the characteristics of a servant leader, and we will touch on the more practical side of servant leadership. Last time, we talked about what servant leadership is. Let's go to the practical side and see how we implement the idea of servant leadership in practice. There are several characteristics of a servant leader. They include vision, listening, empathy, awareness, etc., etc. Today, let's talk about the vision. Vision, of course, is a very important aspect of leadership. Vision provides direction so that a leader can lead. Vision is at the heart of, of a leadership. But when we talk about vision for servant leader, it's slightly different. Robert Greenleaf said, servant leadership begins with a natural feeling that one wants to serve, to serve first. Then conscious choice brings one to aspire to lead. A servant leader sees a need and he desires to, des to serve the people in need, to meet that need. This may sound a lot like a, a nonprofit or a charity to you, but it actually makes a lot of business sense. Let me share with you two real stories. A young Chinese student attended a seminar in 1938 and learned about the high protein property of soya bean. A year later, he volunteered in a refugee camp in Hong Kong, serving refugees from mainland China who fled the Chinese Civil War. He noticed that the refugees suffered malnutrition. So he bought, he, he bought a stone grinder. Yes, a stone grinder, not an electric grinder, a stone grinder, soya beans, sugar, and cheesecloth, and started making soya bean milk. This eventually grows into a business empire that reaches 40 countries. Now, another story comes from India. In an earthquake in 2001, many in India suffered huge losses. A young man who inherited a struggling family business read in a newspaper, Fridge of the Poor Broken. He decided to do something about it and eventually invented a fridge made out of clay and does not require electricity. His business has flourished since. What about you? What needs are you meeting through your business? How can you meet the needs of the people you lead? Is there a higher purpose in your business? The answers to these questions provide the very first draft of your vision statement. Sometimes, Answers don't come immediately. I know many leaders get their answers from their spiritual life because ultimately faith gives answers to purpose and direction. And many leaders get their answers by talking to coaches too. After you have your answers, you need to write it in such a way that can inspire people to join you. And you need to have some effective ways to communicate your vision and some ways to implement your vision in your day-to-day -day operations. 
but at least answering these questions give you the first step. In the next video, we will talk about another important characteristics of a servant leader, listening. How can we listen so that people feel understood and connected and be willing to trust us? Trust is the currency of leadership, and it starts from listening. In our Life at Work series, we started with servant leadership. In our first video, we talked about the general concept of servant leadership. Since then, we started exploring how to implement servant leadership in our daily operation. Last time, we talked about vision as a character of a servant leader. A servant leader sees a need, and as he, he or she tries to meet that need, he or she started to lead others. Today, we continue to explore another character of a servant leader, listening. When we listen well, people feel that we understand, we care, and they started to put their trust in us. The question then is how to listen well, or to put it in another way, how to not listen well. What happened when we stop listening? We start to daydream or think of unrelated stuff like, what should I have for lunch? And we stop having eye contact with the person speaking to us. Or we may look at our phones, our watches, our laptop, the reports that we received, the statistics on our table, or we may focus on how we should respond and we just wait till the speaker stop and catch his breath and we jump right in. Or we just don't care and interrupted him anyway and correct the wrong information or the wrong analysis he made. Even when we pretend to listen, negative emotions start boiling within us, like anger, frustration, contempt. And then we make judgment without trying to understand. So how do we listen well to people we lead and we serve? First, we listen with our mind. We give them our attention. We try to enter into their world. We try to understand what they really mean, and we don't let our mind wander. We also listen with our body. It includes our tone, our facial expression, our body posture, our eye contact. We also need to notice their body language and their nonverbal signals. We listen also with our words. We paraphrase what they said, we summarize their main points, and we ask clarifying questions to help us understand. When we listen, we don't give advice or solution immediately. We do those only after we listen well and are, and are sure that we understand completely what they said. We listen with our in intuition. We listen for meanings behind their words and body language. We also try to notice what they are not saying. We need to test our intuition with clarifying questions. And this brings us to our final point. We listen with clarifying questions. These questions help us to understand accurately and also help the speaker to understand himself in a deeper way. Professional life coaches use clarifying questions and other tools to help clients gain awareness of their assumptions, intentions, thought processes, etc. In our next video, we will explore another character of a servant leader. Persuasion. Persuasion differentiates servant leaders from traditional leaders. This is the fourth video about servant leadership. In the first video, I gave an introduction to the concept of servant leadership. A servant leader serves to lead. Servant leadership is about the attitude of a leader toward the people he or she leads and serves. In order to explore how to implement servant leadership in daily operation, we start to discuss characters of a servant leader. We have talked about the vision of a servant leader. A good leader sees a need and tries to meet that need. Then we talked about listening. A good leader listens to the people so that they feel that they are understood and start to trust the leader. In this video, we will explore persuasion. So, a good leader has a clear vision. He or she is passionate about the vision and convinced that the vision heads in the right direction. But the leader listens to the people and try to understand different opinions, and the leader persuades them to join in. However, persuasion sometimes got a bad name. Some equate persuasion to manipulation, like a bad salesperson tries to persuade the customer by giving less than truthful information. But those are bad persuasion. 
A good leader persuades by giving truthful information and skillful communication. Persuasion is actually influence achieved by good communication. Now, how do we do that? A good leader starts not with communication skills, but with credibility. A good leader builds up his credibility. When the leader is trusted by the, per by the people, it will be easy to persuade them. A leader build, can build credibility by competency and character. It is just like finding a doctor when you move to a new city. You obviously will try to find a doctor that is qualified, experienced, and capable. However, many of us, uh, that is not enough. We also want to find a doctor that is honest and genuinely cares for us. We trust someone who is both capable and with noble characters. A leader is a good leader when he practices what he teaches, does not shy away from difficult situations, behaves consistently and transparently, and leads by example. When people start to trust you, you can persuade them by giving them information and reasons. This is the easiest part of persuasion. Most leaders know how to do this. Just a reminder though, only share relevant information and keep your presentation short interesting and compelling. To do that, you need to know your audience well. But it is not enough to give people reasons, especially if we are asking people to change their habits or to take risks. We need to stir them into action. We need something powerful to push them away from their comfort zone. That powerful thing is our emotions. Think of a charity you gave last time. When did you donate to them? Why? Perhaps you know someone related to it. That connection motivates you. Or there's a picture, a video clip, a story that motivates you to give. You have all the reasons to give to charity, but you end up giving only to a select few. So a good leader is a person people are willing to trust. A good leader presents all the reasoning in a captivating way, but at the end of the day, Emotional connection is the key to persuasion. Finally, a servant leader persuades slightly different than a traditional leader. A servant leader persuades people to join him, but he is not proud. He is not self-centered. His goal is to serve, not to make a name for himself. People can feel that the attitude is different. He may say something like these, or he may simply embody these in their actions and decisions like, I saw a need, I might want to meet that need in the best way. I know a way, it may be a good way, because let me know if you have a better way. It's not about me, it's about meeting that need. So in our next video, we will talk about growth, how a servant leader helps people grow as they work under his or her leadership. This is the fifth video on servant leadership. We gave an introduction to this idea of servant leadership and then we explored the practical side of unpacking some of the character characters of a servant leader. We unpacked a bit about uh, vision, uh, listening, persuasion, and this time we will give some thoughts to growth. Now a servant leader or a good leader commits to the growth of those that he, he or she leads. And what does that mean? Well, first of all, it means that a good leader does not consider his or her subordinates as tools to achieve the end. Bad leaders see employees as tools for achieving results. Good leaders rise above that mentality. Every morning, look into your bathroom mirror, mention the people under you by name, tell yourself they are not your tools. Second, as a leader, you take responsibility for the growth of your team. As a leader, it is part of your job description to develop your team, to improve the performance, the skills, the productivity of your team, and to expand their horizons. A good leader listens to the people to understand in what area they want to grow in, what obstacles there are, etc. Instead of giving advice immediately, a good leader asks good questions to try to help people to come up with their own solutions. Also, a good leader will direct the conversations, bring focus into it. If it is a, in a work environment, the conversations about growth should focus on work, of course. 
the growth they are seeking should help them do their job better and do it faster and do it more efficiently. Also, the conversations need to focus on action steps that they can take to see real growth. Now, to commit to growth of the people also means that leaders commit resources to help them grow. It can mean that the company invests in their growth because their growth will bring better results. Or it may mean books, trainings, seminars to, for people to attend. It may also mean special development time or development leave. A good leader also model growth themselves. They are telling their teams that they are not perfect and they are also committing time and effort to improve themselves. For example, David is, a ba is bad at answering emails and everybody in his team knows about it. So David can tell his team that he's aware of his own problem and tell them he has a plan to improve. Now, if for some reason David failed to improve, he can let his team know why and try again. Now, if David indeed achieved some progress, his team will be encouraged to improve themselves too. This is how a leader can help shape the culture of his team. Now, finally, a leader needs to provide some form of framework or template for his people so that everyone has a common language when they talk about their growth. Now, in my video on personal growth, I said that the path of growth is like a journey from point A to point B. So, to make a plan for personal growth, we need to spend time to understand and explore point A and point B and everything in between. This provides a common language for the whole team or even the whole company to talk about growth. To find out more about this, please watch my videos on personal growth. If you like what you have watched, please click the like button. You can also subscribe to my channel. If you need help putting what you have watched into action, please talk to an ICF certified life coach. You can also find out more about me at lifecoachspencer.com. See you next time.